Hello, good day, and welcome to Lab Talk. This is a series of expert tips to help you get the most from our products in your lab. So we're here to help you with some best practices. And today we have a really hot topic. It is about the best practices to prevent carryover and cross-contamination in PCR and qPCR workflows. So all of you out there that are working with molecular biology workflows, uh, specifically the PCR and qPCR, which is really, really um, almost ubiquitous these days for anybody looking at uh, gene expression. So I have a treat for you today. We have um, Ms. Kirthi Harsha Ram here. She is our application, one of our application scientists here at Thermo Fisher Scientific, and she's going to deliver an awesome presentation with some really cool. Uh, we'll have a little visit to our immersive lab during the presentation as well. Thank you, Angela, uh, for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. Um, happy to have you here. Uh, in this seminar, I will be delving into a topic of high importance, like Ma Angela mentioned, for molecular biology labs, which is uh, the significance of eliminating cross-contamination and carryover contamination in PCR and qPCR workflows. We're also going to touch upon some of the best practices and strategies to prevent it, and also talk about some tools that can help mitigate the risks. PCR, uh, as we know, is a known a revolutionary technique that has transformed our ability to understand, detect, and manipulate genetic information. The technique is of paramount importance in molecular biology and medical di diagnostics. It, it enables us to ra uh, it, it enables rapid amplification of specific DNA sequences with unparalleled precision. However, despite its tremendous potential, the accuracy and reliability of PCR are dependent on the precise amplification of targets, along with the absence of cross-contamination or carryover contamination. Absence of extraneous nucleic acids is absolutely critical for the success of PCR, because even small or trace amounts of unintended DNA or RNA can get amplified exponentially and uh, overpower the results and cause erroneous uh, outcomes. This makes having stringent contamination control measures essential uh, for accurate and reliable molecular biology and diagnostic applications. So what exactly is carryover contamination in PCR workflows? In simple terms, it is the inadvertent mixing of genetic material between samples during the amplification process. The most common causes of uh, false signals are the carryover of leftover or previously amplified DNA from one tube to the other or other forms of sample to sample contamination. The consequences of cross-contamination and carryover contamination can be severe. It can compromise the integrity, of, uh, integrity and the experimental results of the assay. It cause, causing costly delays, requiring laborious troubleshooting, and, in, and loss of invaluable time and resources. Uh, it can also lead to reporting errors, and if it's, a, if it's a diagnostic analysis, then it can have devastating outcomes and irreparable damage to a lab's credibility even. This contamination can, however, be introduced by several factors, such as uh, sample handling, inappropriate lab techniques, and most importantly, by the use of inadequate labware. So let's explore some of the best practices, tips, and strategies that, when followed appropriately, could mitigate the risk of cross-contamination and carryover contamination during PCR workflows. First and foremost, it is essential uh, to establish written protocols or SOPs that are a set of procedures and guidelines um, with specific steps and practices to be followed when conducting the experiments. These protocols are designed to ensure accuracy, safety, and consistency in lab work, ensuring that all the protocols that are followed are validated and implemented meticulously can minimize error erroneous workflows resulting in carryover contamination. Next, uh, practicing proper hygiene and uh, personal, proper, pro, uh, personal hygiene, such as uh, washing hands, wearing clean lab coats, using your gloves correctly, wearing face shields and masks, uh, avoiding touching of the hair and face, mouth during the experiment, a frequent changing of gloves when handling multiple samples. Uh, these are some of the practices that can be implemented. Uh, another important thing is to implement stringent cleaning practices such as a regularly cleaning work surfaces, equipment, pipettes, and other tools with appropriate decontamination solutions. These can be enzymatic decontaminants like the RNAs or DNAs of A, UV radiation, or even 70% IPA. 
Next, it would be maintaining a clean laboratory with adequate organization of materials and reagents. This can be instrumental in preventing any unnecessary contamination risks. Maintaining a properly uh, calibrated instruments and equipment, such as pipettes, to ensure accurate and precise liquid handling is also vital. Last but not the least, emphasizing on ergonomic practices, incorporating instruments and workflows that can help personal uh, help prevent personal fatigue and RSI, that is repetitive stress injury, can help prevent in a, inadvertent mix-ups and errors. Those were some of the more general, you know, lab strategies. Now let's move on to some specific strategies that are applicable for PCR workflows in uh, PCR workflows. Having a dedicated workspace and designated physically separate rooms or areas, such as pre-PCR, post-PCR, for the different stages of the workflow is essential. It is important to establish a unidirectional workflow to avoid backtracking and prevent accidental transfer of PCR products or contaminants between processed and unprocessed samples, and also following a logical order of laboratory organization from clean areas to potentially contaminated areas during sample handling is of fact most important. As you can see in the diagram there, uh, I'm depicting the, the directionality, the unidirectionality of uh, any particular PCR workflow. It is, uh, it is also helpful if to keep exclusive and properly labeled uh, lab benches, laminar flow hoods, pipettes, pipette tips, microcentrifuges, and other labware for sample preparation. Um, and also one other factor to emphasize is on training. Training lab personnel to practice appropriate sample handling techniques, including using aerosol resistant pipetting methods can be highly important in avoiding carryover contamination. Another point I would like to touch upon here is the importance of having reaction controls in PCR, react, P PCR experiments. This cannot be overstated. Having, having reaction controls provide an essential reference point against which we can evaluate the accuracy, reliability, and success of our experiments. It is essential to remember to ensure using fit-for-purpose tools for and equipment that are specifically certified for PCR workflows also. Scientists, we all know we work diligently to maintain, minima, maintain minimize, and mitigate carryover and cross-contamination risks. However, even after following all the best practices, it is impossible to anticipate and avoid inadvertent mistakes and errors that can happen during laboratory workflows 100% of the time. Anyone who has worked at a lab bench can agree to that. Although, use, although using sterile, re, sterile reagents following best practices mentioned previously uh, play a critical role in preventing carryover and cross-contamination, the quality of the tools you use in the lab can be of utmost importance. Therefore, choosing the right tools, such as the right pipette tips, can make all the difference. The micropipettes and the tips used in the labs are ubiquitous tools that are indispensable for, most, for the most critical work that the molecular biologists in, this, in the labs per, uh, perform. The action of pipetting itself can create aerosols or liquid pass-throughs that are able to be drawn into the cavity of the pipette nose and can be carried across or transferred to subsequent samples, creating carryover contamination. Pipetting errors are one of the most common reasons for carryover or, ca uh, or cross-contamination that, that is noted. Using only tips that, that, that are fitted with special filters or barriers uh, that are specially created to prevent aerosol formation can prevent most of these occurrences of cross-contamination. Tips like the thermoscientific or barrier tips can help protect your pipettes and samples from carryover contamination. Let me explain briefly how using the Thermo Fisher art barrier tip can be beneficial. These art barrier tips, along with providing accurate and precise liquid dispensing, have a special ability that many other tips do not possess. The art barrier tips are designed with self-sealing barrier that can block the passage of liquids and aerosols. This barrier is able to seal off completely 
to prevent liquid samples and aerosols from coming in contact with the pipette nose cone. This ensures that the pipettes and subsequent samples are protected from carryover contamination and there is no carryover. Most scientists have had the unpleasant experience of erroneous pipetting. We're all working with a large number of samples in short durations, under stressful conditions, personal fear, uh, there are chances there is personal fatigue. Uh, erroneous pipetting, such as aspirating the wrong, the wrong volumes, using the wrong tips on the wrong pipettes, aspirating the excess volume than what is designated for the tip. These are, uh, these are occurrences that happen in the lab as much as we would like to avoid them. Bar using the art barrier tips thus makes it as the best choice for clinic for use with critical samples and sensitive assays because it protects it protects the sample from carryover and contamination and also the pipettes but it also can protect the lab personnel from accidental exposure to biohazard samples due to aerosols contam aerosols contamination now uh, i would like to take us to our immersive lab uh, where megan is here to demo for us this unique feature that the art barrier tips contain. Hi, Megan. Megan is in the lab, busily working away at her lab bench, working with some critical DNA samples. She has a timer go off. So she has to stop her work, put her pipe down and attends to the timer and comes back. As she comes back to pick up where she left off and begins pipetting. Only to realize that she has picked up a wrong pipette and used a wrong tip and pipetted excess volume. Oh no, Megan has used a 20 microliter tip on a 200 microliter pipette. Normally, that would mean that the excess volume would go all through the pipette tip and into the nose cone. This would cause serious contamination. Megan would have to stop her work and get right into decontaminating her pipette. This might include autoclaving or spraying the pipette with decontaminants, um, which is now her downtime where she cannot process samples, causing unexpected delays in her workflows. What a bummer. But hey, don't worry, Megan. The art barrier tip have got your back. Let's go in closer to see that. Look, look at that art barrier perfectly holding off the excess liquid. The liquid is nowhere near the nose cone. The, the art barrier was able to successfully stop the excess volume and prevent any contamination going through to the pipette at all. Megan, simply discard that tip and use a correct one and go about continuing your assay. No additional hassle uh, for decontamination or downtime for you. Thank you, Megan, for demoing the, the special self-sealing barrier for the art barrier tip for us. Wasn't that a cool feature in to see our demo lab? So to summarize my presentation today, Preventing cross-contamination and carryover contamination is absolutely critical, and it is possible. Having properly designed lab, a well-maintained work areas, adequately trained personnel, using the right labware, uh, more importantly, the, the correct pipe tips are crucial. By implementing these preventative measures and maintaining a vigilant approach, researchers can maintain a cross-contamination-free PCR workflows leading to more accurate and trustworthy results. We have a host of information and resources on this topic related to the art barrier tips and preventing cross-contamination and several other topics. Please visit our website to learn more about how we can help scientists achieve their best results. With that, Kirti, I think we're at time. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been lovely having you here. Uh, and for you to take the time out to help us uh, in the lab is such a benefit. 
uh, thanks again for the great presentation, and we hope to see you soon. Uh, come back in. We're not we're not on next week. We we're skipping a week, and we're going to come back on the 14th and talk a little bit about that topic around decontamination and using bleach because I think there's a few tips we might have um, that can help you with that as well. So hopefully we'll see you then, and everybody have an awesome day. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, everybody, for joining us.